Hi guys, Karen here from the Motor Roamers and Miles of course. Hello. <laughs> uh, welcome to this week's video where we have one hell of a monster mashup for you. Huge, huge. Oh, it's enormous. And we're going to take you right down south from the Sahara Desert all the way up through the Atlas Mountains, Marrakesh and a little bit south. It's mega. It's got loads in it. Mega. You've just got to come and watch it. Watch it. You know you want to. Oh, yes. The Busun Sahara, our next station stop. There is no road. I really wish we had um, smelly vision. The smell's coming out of this chicken tagine. It's just lovely. Bon appetit. And as the sun sets on the beautiful Urg Chigaga Desert, we're thankful for a lovely day, as challenging as it's been. Beautiful food and a stunning view. Good morning, sunshine. To another beautiful day in paradise. So, um, Abdul here, owner of Camping Le Boussol. Le Sahara. Thank you. Uh, welcome. <laughs> is going to show me how to do one of his turbans ready for the desert tomorrow. Monsieur. Bienvenue. Le jour on fait un peu ici. Oui. Et après. Oui. On met à côté le nez. Ah. Et toujours on prend ici avec la main. Oui, oui. Pour que ça tourne. Oui. Bien. Ah, voilà. ok. Il y a beaucoup de passants. Oui. Plusieurs passants. Un, deux. Et après, trois. Descends comme ça. Oui. Pour faire une jolie gazelle. <rire> Et voilà. Après, on va essayer. C'est très simple, mon. Très simple. Oui. Voila. It's gear nailed. Now I'm desert ready. So we're at uh, Camping La Boussole in Mohammed and we are about to take a trek into the desert, Urg Chigaga, with our guide Labi. So let the adventure begin. To the desert we go. Yes. <gasps> 60 euros for a whole day trip. It's nine o'clock in the morning. Sun's, sun's up. Oh, very bloody worth it, 60 euros. Although we're looking forward to it. <laughs> we're report on Route T2. This is Wild Rocket. And boy, has it got a punch. Who'd have thought this in the desert? It's awesome. Silence is amazing. Just in the background there, you've got Algeria. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of nowhere, there's a shop. This is my kind of place. Welcome to Erg Shigaga. The little bouviac, bouviac, where we rest for a couple of hours before returning. Well, we've had a lovely lunch at a little bouviac and just before we take our two two and a half hour trip back just taking a little wander into the dunes I've really enjoyed this although it's been a really long and uh, quite expensive trip we've been with some lovely French people 
so it's made for a nice journey although been quite tough for miles I think Whoa. I like it hey puffy And after all that excitement in the desert, there's only one thing left. A little bit of yoga. pronouncing this. This is a tis and tis tifnifnifnit pass en route to Uzazati. Can't pronounce that either. wondering about those white bits they're not clouds it's snow see that sparkling light about there that's the world's largest concentrated solar power plant so here we are at Wazazat I know it's quite tricky to get your tongue round it's got quite a commercial feel to it this city uh, in part because it's a centre for film locations. So it's definitely set up for the tourists. We stayed at the municipal campsite just half a mile away from the famous Kasbah. Just come to the Kasbah at Wazazat. Oh, it's amazing. It's 40 dirhams for two to come in. And it's just like a warren. They will try and sell you um, a guided tour, 120 dirhams, although you can also just do it yourself. You can go in all these little doors. 
go and see what's up those stairs if you wish. Look at this. This Teoriet Kasbah actually dates back to the 17th century, built by a local, powerful family. It was more prominent though in the 19th century, especially given its geographical location between um, Marrakesh and the desert. Sadly though, it fell into disrepair and started being taken over by squatters and decayed. In the 90s, it was taken over uh, by UNESCO and is now being fully restored and is definitely worth a visit. So we've just uh, had our second visit to 8 uh, Benedou, uh, bought a few things, obviously we'd already been before so rather than go back to the main road and do the Tiz and Tichka uh, from, the, from that point we are taking the back road, meant to be very beautiful, the P1506. We will show you some footage, are you ready? Oh my god, uh, we're going up there! After another lovely night at Hotel Agdal, 50 dirham for the night without any services. We're finishing off the P1506 off to the Tis and Tichka. Whoop whoop! It's the 16th of March 2023. And the motoromers are going to do the Tiz and Tichka Pass in Berber, the difficult pass. <gasps> uh, we've just passed the highest point, which is uh, 2,112 uh, metres, over 7,000 feet. And we're going to start doing the switchback. Are you good to go, Mr. Davis? They don't call me Switchback Sam for nothing. <laughs> He's up in the snow. Let's go to Morocco, she said, be nice and warm. It's flipping snow there.
Kitschka Pass. That was it. Quite a surprise, not what we were expecting at all. Uh, I expected en route to Marrakesh to be going uphill, not downhill. Um, the pass itself is about 38 miles and we've got 60 kilometers, that's about 36 miles to run to Marrakesh. So we're still on the N9, uh, although the Tichka Pass itself is probably over and done with. And before we knew it, we were back in the loving arms of Camping Lurele, just north of Marrakesh. Would you know, just 30 minutes from the campsite, by foot, you can reach this amazing cactus garden. A wonderful, wonderful place with 150 different species of cactus, designed by German Hans Thiermann. It's actually quite furry. Oh, only joking. Find some baby cows. So, so, <laughs> so, what are you doing? <laughs> So with a bit of sadness, I had to say goodbye to my right-hand man for a couple of days as he left for the UK for a funeral, leaving me to drive through the centre of Marrakesh on my own. Job done. So what's a girl to do on her own? Well, be a tour guide, of course. So Marrakesh, here we come with Paul and Jill, me showing them round some of my best bits and a few new bits for me too. Oh boy, did we have some fun. We've come a day too early. There's some sort of event going on. We reckon, what do we reckon that is? The horse? Mercedes? Ferrari. Ferrari. Anyway, it still looks beautiful. Another of those occasions where I really wish we had smelly vision. We've got orange blossom and jasmine down there. Oh, it's fantastic. So that was the Motoromas doing a quick visit to the Baudi Palace. The ruins are spectacular, great museums. Shame about the event that's been going on, although absolutely recommend it. 70 mad, you'll spend at least an hour here. Fantastic. We're in the middle of the high Atlas Mountains and they're building a football pitch. How cool is that? They love their football. This is a real community project. It's absolutely fabulous. We're even watering it. They've obviously got grass seed down.
What aromas are reporting in today at the Paradise Gardens called Anima, just south, yeah, south <laughs> of Marrakesh. And we're going to show you around, see what you think. Yeah. So we've just paid for our tickets, which are 120 mad each, 12 euros, around 10 quid. Let's go and see if it's good value. This has only started in 2010 and it really was just waste ground. And look at it already. Top for the cafe. I think this will do us. Smooth sailing. Yeah. And then the top, top bit. Look at that. really have to keep your eyes open here. Quite literally. <laughs> They're watching you. This is really such a sensory experience. You've got the colours, the sights, the sounds of the beautiful birds, and actually sometimes just the pure stillness. The tactile plants, Oh, <laughs> I've just created some new seeds. Can you imagine what this is going to be like when those roses are out? And that rosemary is blossoming. If you're looking for somewhere to stay with your motorhome and visit Marrakesh within a 10 minute walk of the Kutubia Mosque, then this place, which if you just look underneath, here are some coordinates. This place is great. Guardian parking and it's 10 dirham per hour and you can stay overnight. As a birthday treat, we've come back into Marrakesh, visit for a cup of coffee. It's not any old cup of coffee, it's coffee by El Bancha. Yeah, there's the famous bar. All their coffees, 220 of them. I had no idea which one I was going to choose. And of course, no coffee is complete without a cake. My third trip to Marrakesh in um, the last month, a number of times we walked past this place and walked straight past it and here we are. 
thanks to Kinging It, who told us all about it, we've decided to come and celebrate my birthday here. Happy birthday. To me. Happy birthday to me. Anyway, the menu, you get two, right? And you've just got coffees from all around the world. It's going to take us half an hour to decide what coffee we drink. And I don't even drink coffee. Still, just has to be done. Well, that's coffee for one. We're going to be flying this afternoon. Let's do it with cream. Okay. Nice. This is a coffee explosion. There's more. And then the coffee beans on the top. Oh. God, what an amazing way to finish off not only my birthday weekend, this monster Moroccan mashup. Hope you've loved it. Cheers.